<coughs> Alright, welcome back to Algebra 1 videos. This is section 10.4 of the textbook, Solving Radical Expressions. It's going to be a rather quick section. It's basically uh, solving equations by following PEMDAS backwards with one added little wrinkle, and that is that we can have square root symbols showing up in the equations. So, first thing is a definition of vocabulary word, radical equation. A radical equation is any equation. That means you've got an equal sign with something on the left and something on the right. Uh, that also has a variable under the radicand. So, if you just have a square root of a number, it's not called a radical equation because that's just a number. But if you have the square root of a variable, then you have a radical equation. Okay, and the issue with radical equations is sometimes you have extraneous solutions. Extraneous means um, like out of bounds or uh, it seems like a solution but it's not. So an extraneous solution is when you solve the equation you get an answer, but it turns out if you plug that answer back into the equation it doesn't work. So the solution gave you kind of a wrong result. And so it's incredibly important with all of these uh, radicand radical equations that you actually plug your answers back in and check and make sure you didn't accidentally get an extraneous solution. The reason this can happen is because when you square both sides of an equation, if one side had a minus sign, that minus sign disappears, and that was important information that could affect the answer, and you've lost that information. So you've got to always check if you square both sides. It's a couple problem solving tips, and we'll get right to the examples. Okay, first one. You want to simplify each expression. That's the expression on the left and the expression on the right. So simplify each side, first following PEMDAS forwards, and then solve the equation, which means working on both sides simultaneously by following the golden rule. Whatever you do on the left, you also do on the right, as well as working backwards PEMDAS. So first add and subtract to both sides, then multiply and divide on both sides, then take care of exponents. And this is the kind of location we'll be looking at is squaring or square rooting is this exponent section. So only after you've added and subtracted and after you've multiplied and divided will you be dealing with these square root symbols. Okay, you need to isolate the radicand and then square both sides. That's almost always how you're going to do it, as I was just saying. So take care of all multiplication, division, adding and subtracting. Get that radical by itself uh, and then square both sides. Whereas in the past we got the squared part by itself and took the square root of both sides. So same idea, uh, just the opposite property. And then the last thing is just a reminder, you always have to check your answers to make sure that you didn't get an extraneous solution. Okay, So here's some examples to kind of just pick and choose. The first one is incredibly easy. There's nothing to add or subtract or multiply or divide. The square root symbol is by itself. So to solve this, you square both sides. So we square this side, and we square this side, and we get, of course, f equals 49. You check by plugging this back in right here. Is the square root of 49 equal to 7? Yes. So it works. Fantastic. Okay, let's just jump down here to number 7. You don't want to square both sides yet because you don't have the square root symbol isolated. So the first thing you'll do is you'll add 6 to both sides. That gives you the square root of g is equal to 9. And here you'll square both sides and then you'll get g equals 81. And of course, if you plug it back in, it works. Okay, how about uh, let's try uh, number yeah, let's try number nine. Okay, so for this one, you do have the square root already isolated by itself. So even though there's a multiplication and subtraction, because they're inside the radical, it's kind of like there's some parentheses right here, even though you don't see them. They're all in the radical. So the first thing to do is to square both sides. So that cancels the radical, and then we have two t minus one equals 5 squared, which is 25. Notice there's no plus or minus in any of this stuff. Okay, If we add 1 to both sides, that gives us 26. So we have 2t equals 26. And then if we divide both sides by 2, we're going to get t equals 13. Okay, we check that one. So notice how I use an arrow in between each piece as I simplify it. I don't use an equal sign. Uh, it's important to differentiate. So here's an equation where the left equals the right. Here's an arrow and then a new equation because this side here is not equal to this side here. So as I change it, I use an arrow. Now let's plug this back in and check. If I plug a 13 right here, double it, that's 26. Subtract 1, that's 25. Take the square root and we get 5. So we checked it, it still works. Um, I think you get the idea for these basic ones. So work backwards, isolate the square root, square both sides, and then keep working until you get the number by itself. Okay, notice how all of these, when you plug them back in, they worked no problem. Okay, that's because you have only numbers on the other side of the equation. There was no variables. So we're going to step it up a little, little bit in difficulty. 
Now we're going to have variables on both sides. Okay, so we've got, let's do 15. We've got the radical by itself. So the first thing to do is to square both sides. When we do that, we get x squared equals, now here square and square cancel, so I just get x plus 2. So I'm going to need to subtract x, subtract x, and subtract 2, subtract 2, and I'm going to get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Notice that because it's a quadratic expression, quadratic here, I wanted to get everything on one side and set equal to 0, so now I can use factoring and the zero product property, or I could use completing the square, or I could use the quadratic formula. So let's try to factor it and see if we have any luck. So x squared in the front means I have to do x times x. 2 in the back means I need to do a 2 times 1, and now I want a negative x as my result, so a negative 2 and a positive 1 give me the correct thing. So my solutions are x equals uh, positive 2 and x equals negative 1. Now let's plug both of these back in and see if they work. If I plug a 2 in right here, 2 plus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. So that one works. Let's plug in negative 1. If I plug in negative 1 right here, I get negative 1 plus 2, which is positive 1. The square root of positive 1 is positive 1, not negative 1. So this one here was an extraneous solution. It did not work. The only solution to this equation that I can use is x equals 2. Okay, let's take a look at number 19. Here, if I square both sides, I have to put parentheses because this side is actually a binomial. Okay, so on this side, that cancels, that cancels. Arrow here, I get x plus 5 equals x minus 1 quantity squared. You really, 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 at this point, need to be using the shortcut, which is a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared. When you have a binomial squared, you really should be using this shortcut and not writing it out twice. So this is going to give me x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, I'm going to move the x over here by subtracting x from both sides, and I'm going to move the 5 over by subtracting 5 from both sides, and that's going to give us x squared minus 3x, uh, negative 1, so negative 4, equals 0. So combine these two together to get the negative 4, combine these two together to get the negative 3x, and once again it does appear like we can factor it, so we're going to factor it and use the zero product property. So x in the front, x in the front, multiplies to 4 and adds up to 3 is going to be a negative 4 and a positive 1. So with zero product property, x equals 4, x equals <coughs> negative 1, Let's plug them back in. If I plug a 4 in on this side, I get 4 plus 5, which is the square root of 9. And on this side, if I plug a 4 in, 4 minus 1 is 3. The square root of 9 is 3, so this one works. No problem. x equals negative 1. If I plug that in, I get the square root of negative 1 plus 5 is 4. Equals negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. That does not work and therefore this is again not a solution. Now, I know that we've done two examples and both times the positive part was working and the negative part was not working. However, that's not an, an always true rule. You can't just assume that because this came out to be a negative number, it won't work when you plug it back in. It all depends on the individual problem. So there's certainly some times where a negative solution might work and a positive solution might not work. So be extra cautious when you're, when you're looking and plugging these values back in. You actually do need to plug in the point check and see both sides and see if they're the same or not. Um, I'll leave it with no more examples here because it's pretty basic. You're using the same techniques that we've always been using, except you're adding in the fact that you can square both sides. And then when you do square both sides, notice that if there's variables, you're going to get out a quadratic. And to solve a quadratic, you've got three choices. You could factor it and use the zero product property. You could complete the square and work backwards. Or you could get it in a standard form and then use the quadratic formula. So lots of different choices. Although it seems like in these problems they're trying to trying to put in problems that are factorable and work out with nice numbers uh, rather than ending with square roots. All right, that's it for this section. See you in class.